in our first series, we spoke about that directory domains services and we saw the benefit and functions of it and we saw that it is at the domain services is used to manage resources in our organization, which could include printers, uh, users and all the rest in the organization. And I also saw the overview of this Windows Server 2012 part. We spoke about setting your address resources here and the local address. You can you have to set the computer name, you have to give it an address. And after doing that, make sure you date in time, hopefully also right. So you date in time first, computer name first, the second the system registers. After the system registers, you give it one. And IP address well that is done then you have to make sure that you set a strong password for your account and then after that you need to install at the to the services so that is what we are done so far so now we are going to uh, set up and configure at the directory domain so now at the domain service isn't functioning properly so we need to uh, make sure it functions properly so as I said in the first series I was saying that it goes along with the end in order to make at the domain service work functioning properly so ADDS simply means Active Directory Domain Services. That is the interface of the rule that is going to help us utilize or manage and maintain one resources in our organization. Without wasting time, let's dig in. So now, what we need to do now, we have already installed the role that you are looking for. That is Active Directory Domain Services. Any role that is installed appears here. So if I come back to dashboard, it tells me what I need. So that is what I'm seeing. So that is my dashboard. So I'm back. So we run up the added and again because we already added so we need to work to work on that so we see under this notification box so that's notifications so any time a rule is installed in this configuration you should be observing the notification so it's giving me this warning sign telling me that something needs to be done so if i click on that option i'm seeing this option to promote the server to the main controller which means that it is telling me to promote this server to the main controller and the domain controller as we say we said this server is going to become a domain controller and the domain controller is going to help us to be able to, uh, to manage and control one of the things. So DNS needs to be added up to Active Directory in order to make Active Directory domain service work function. So we're going to promote it as we are seeing from here. So we just click on that. It says configuration is required. So just click on promote this server to a domain controller and we can expand it from here. So now they're going to stick as you see here. It's our first time setting up our first and fresh domain. So we have to make sure that we create a new for it. So if it's your first time setting up your first ever in your organization, then you should have to go for or you should go for add a new forest. Then you give the forest a name. So for our case, we are not going to be connected to the internet. We don't, we don't have a registered domain at the moment. So what we can do is that we'll be using our name for instance. So we have Kimus Lab dot local. So this is the account. So this is the domain we prefer using. So if you have the dot com, you can go for a dot com. Dot com. But if you are if you go for local, that means that you're not going to go external, so you won't be able, you are not willing to uh, go outside uh, or the internet, so you don't want to head towards the internet. So, local means that it's going to be a local one, same. But if you have registered for the com and the rest, you could provide your right domain. So, we just have to proceed once that is done. You click on less, then this is the functional level. So, we stick it to you. So, depending on the requirements in your organization. You can start to go further to it, so depending on the requirements. For our case, every uh, um, server we have is going to be one server to itself, so we're going to stick it to the default. Then, in case I forget my password, or in case I'm setting this one up, in case I forget the directory service, what should I do? I have to provide this password in order to restore the directory, whatever I'm setting up. So, I'm providing a password so that in case I should lose whatever communication is being done here. I'll be able to work to come and restore them. So you leave it as you can see here domain name system or service. You see is there. Um, domain DNS is there. It is going to be installed. See, we didn't install it over now. You see it is giving us an interface we added up here. So we're going to stick it to default, then we click on yes. So it says delegation cannot be created because of one then we can still proceed. Yeah, we click on yes. Because that one is uh, So you have to wait for a few minutes as it's trying to detect an advice for our So you can test an advice, an advice picks the, one, the first part of the domain. So you can just click on what next to proceed.
Now this is a database log file. So everything concerning our database is at the directory on those tabs is going to be stored in here. And it's good. this NTL NTDS log file is going to store any errors and it's going to track the activities of the directory. And this what helps us to be able to share files on the network for people to have access to it. So now we can proceed. And this is the next thing that we have done. If it's okay, then we can proceed. So now it is taken care of. So we need to install now. So click on install. We're going to wait for a while. So once we are done, the system is going to be restarted. So once it's restarted, then we will then configure the data. So right when the system restarts, at the directory domain service is configured. And to set the system up to become a domain controller, we then have to configure our DNS. And once DNS is configured, then we will have what we call fully qualified domain controller. So domain controller is comprised of what? Active directory and DNS. So when active directory and DNS come together, then we have what? Domain controller. Now let's keep note that once we are done installing this and system restarts our settings for the dns is going to change so let's check it here happy version 4. you've seen that it is one now and here also is one so right when system restarts it is going to revert to look back address so look back is used for testing purposes so you see you are about to sign out so the system is going to sign out in few minutes so our system is going to restart so you have to wait for it to restart so the rest us in few minutes. So you see it is rested. So you see how interesting it is as you are going through the process. So the system has restarted and we are waiting for a few minutes to begin. Now let's observe what happens at first we see an administrator. Let's see what happens when it gets to the screen for us to provide a password. So because we have installed the DNS, it's going to take a while. So let's give it a few minutes for it to set it up for us. So let's be patient and wait for our server to work on the process. So because we have installed DNS, that's why it's taking quite a few minutes. So this will take like two to three minutes. So let's stick behind and see what happens. So I'm applying to create a printer now, you are good to go. So you see, account has been disabled. That is the user account, the one you disabled. So it will always forward that way. Because we didn't delete the account, so it will always give us this okay. So now this is the interface we are going to see. So to log in, we have to provide, we now know that the user it has no exit. So we have to use this arrow when you come here. Then you should see the administrator. So now our domain can use slab slash administrator. So that's why we're going to use to log into our system. Then we can provide the IP address. So, port at IZIZ. Then we can log in. So now we are in now.
Okay, so now that we are done installing DNS, and you see, uh, DNS is added up here. So now, if I click on choose now, I should see Active Directory. So Active Directory, because now it's configured, I'm seeing all these options. So one, two, three, four, five. It comes right after you have configured your Active Directory. So now that is it. And this is the interface that's going to help us manage resources in the organization. So we're going to manage our users, we're going to manage our computers, for instance, a whole lot of things is going to be managed over here. So let's learn that and see what happens. There's going to be a video on that, but I just want to show you a quick overview here. So you can see we have all BT users, so computers are here. So any computer that joins this domain or that joins this server. Now this becomes a server once you complete any DNS, then it becomes a server. So every computer that joins to their company or any computer we have in our organization needs to be joined to this one, the server. Now because we have set up the domain controller, so you see it has the name as well. This here it has given us the name. So you can say go back at the local And these are the all the users we have. So any user that is going to work with the organization, the accounts or the password has to have the username and password of that. Uh, staff personnel that will be joining our company. All this list is going to be given to you as a system administrator. And your duty is to come and use at the directory uh, computer interface here to add users in the So you can see every organization has departments. So over here, you have to create departments. So when I right click on my domain, this is the department. You want to create a department, you call it for your organizational unit. You create a department each for each department. Then each computer names and each computer uses also the account to be created in so that's the work of the so we'll be working with the two guys so you can close it out for you. so now we need to head and then we configure the so now the directory is taken care of so we need to work to install the but as i said i told you that right when it's done it starts the IP address is going to change so let's launch the ncpa.cpa the one we type so ncpa.cpa it takes us there or you can right click on the network and enter open and drop and join and it should take you here to the same moment or you can also use the command line interface and just type ncpa.cpa that one should take you there or you can just type ip config over here you see it over here but you see we're not seeing our dns so when we see every detail information we add all to it add to context slash all and it should give you the details so now you can see our dns server is over here that's the preferred dns so now you're seeing that we still have one and two is zero book. it is maintained because you haven't set up dns yet so right one dns is configured and then the system restarts then we should the change should take place. So let's go and check the graphical means. So you see the DNS server is also there. So it means we are good to go. So now we need to configure uh, our DNS. So let's expand DNS from here. And the four lookup zone. You see, four lookup zone. So the responsibility of DNS is to resolve those names into its corresponding one, okay, as well as vice versa. So Resolving post names into IP addresses is taken care of by this one for for the person. Resolves post name, that is a computer name to its corresponding one IP address. So if I'm going to search for this on the network, I just have to launch run double slash and type DC. This should give me information about my server. And then I also I can also type the IP address you are seeing, which is double slash one nine two one six eight dot zero and then one this also gives us the zero one information so now it has resolved it for us so we also need yeah, we were saying that dns resolve host names to its ip address and then also ip into its host name so it means that we need to now that we have seen that the host name to ip and then is taking care of our four lookup let's look at one other lookup so we have the reverse it's not configured yet it's not set up so that's why one that we're going to add configure so you have to right click on this zone then you select for a new zone then you can proceed from here it's stick to default because it's your first time setting up the server so stick to default as you see because our primary is what zone that's the first server that we set up 
then you can proceed and leave everything as it is by default. As we said, we are not working with IP version 6, so we have to go for IP version 4, then we can proceed. Then we type the first three portions of the IP address, which is 192.168.0. See, it is reversing for us. We saw the last portion, which is 1. So we can proceed, and then we will stick to allow, and then we finish it up. So now we are done. But it's not going to be functioning for us unless we add the last portion of the address to it. So we expand the reverse local version, then whatever we create, the reverse is there, but one is missing. So we right click on that and we create a pointer PTR. This you will be able to add the one to it. So now we have added it to it. And now we're going to get the host name. So the host name is what you call FQD or fully qualified domain name. Fully qualified domain name comprises of the computer name plus the Name. So remember the committed name you gave was VC and then the domain name is what to use that's called to use for what to use lamp to look at so that we type typing manually so let's go ahead and check it from here so when you go and over here then to computer properties you should be able to see there we have what computer name that's DC and then full computer name this is what you need to type so either we type DC dot to use lamp to look at manually ourselves or we come and then we select what browse DC for the cap zone to use lab and then we look for the last option. This DC as a domain, then it will be populated for us. Then we can proceed and then we click on it. So now it has been added for us. So now it's time for us to test to see whether DNS is working or not functioning. So in order to test it, you have to right click on the domain name as the name of your domain. And then you go for launch NS lookup. When you go for launch NS lookup, you should see the fully qualified name that you have provided as well as the IP address. And then control C to come out of whatever you see. Then you type NS look up manually yourself. It's supposed to give you the same thing as you're seeing at the top. So if it gives you the same thing as you're seeing here, that means it's perfect. They also have to type the IP address and because we say we can use the address also over here in the So they are typing NS look up for one nine two one six eight dot zero and then what one if you okay let's come out of it again and let's look up one nine two dot one six eight dot zero dot one one and I see it gives us the same thing. They also have to do the same thing with this one, name, which is DC dot use lab dot local. So this is it. It also gives us one same thing. So this means that our uh, domain controller is up and one running perfectly for us. So that's what we have done so far. So this is how to set up and configure our DNS. So we've been able to work with what directory and then so now our DNS is functioning perfectly for us so we can close DNS out so the next video series that is part 3 you'll be looking at how to work with at directory domain services that is the at directory users and computer. so we'll be seeing how to create all use how to create users and then we are going to have a different server or we will have a join a client system how to join to the domain controller then with that one you use that anytime you join the user to the network to the domain you can anytime the user is created in here you can use that to test it but for our case i already have another windows server set up of which i have been set it up as a domain controller i will join that system to the domain and let's use then you will set up and continue and work with one until the two domain users so stay tuned for the next video that is part three it's coming very soon, so prepare for your message. I hope this video was helpful. So, see you in the next set of videos. That is part three. So, this is how to set up and configure Active Directory domain services as well as DNS. So, bye.